Hello and welcome to today's webinar by OKM3D. My name is Sven and today I want to talk about printing with polypropylene on the Race 3D Pro 2 printers specifically. You can also do this on other Race 3D printers of course, but today it's all about the Pro 2. Why? Because we have a new kit that enables you to print with polypropylene with more ease than you might be used to. To do this we've partnered with Bayreuth company PP Print, a manufacturer not only of polypropylene filament but also of a special support material and they sell a special surface that this stuff sticks to really well when printing and lets you get it off that stuff easily after you're done. So essentially this is a multi-part process and package that as a result has really really nice polypropylene parts. Now why would you even care about polypropylene printing? It's because polypropylene as a material is very special. Polypropylene is somewhat flexible. It isn't completely rigid like PLA or ABS. Instead, if I've got a part like this, I can just bend and flex it without that part breaking. That's already more or less unique. Um, then on top of that, it has excellent material properties. It is uh, resistant to a fairly high temperature. It is uh, completely food safe. It is also safe for the extended contact with skin, making it an ideal choice for orthesis, prosthesis, anything in that kind of direction. And I think you could have already guessed that, judging by all the stuff that I have behind me. It's also easily colored, meaning there, that there is a wide range of colors available for this. And, well, it just yields very, very good results. Uh, it's easily cleaned, it's easily disinfected, um, all of these things. But it is traditionally fairly difficult to print. Not only is the material somewhat difficult, you need a support material and traditionally for polypropylene you use breakaway supports. Meaning that you have quite a lot of work afterwards to get rid of all that extra support. And on top of that, the stuff generally doesn't, or the polypropylene, generally doesn't stick very well to the existing built plates. So whether you're using glass or a build tech surface, um, like the Pro 2 traditionally does with a build tech uh, on it, or um, even MT Plus or something else, it just doesn't stick very well. And that's why PP Print came up with what they call the P surface. It's a black rubbery type material that you can stick to either with glue to the metal steel built plate that was traditionally at uh, aluminium built plate that was traditionally in the Pro 2 or to a glass plate. And then on that special rubbery stuff, that's where the polypropylene sticks real well. At least while it has a temperature of, I think it's anywhere between 60 to 80 degrees. Then when you heat this up to 110 degrees, it just comes right off. And that's kind of, um, a very special part about this and what makes it so great. Otherwise with polypropylene you would normally use polypropylene tape that you apply to the glass or aluminium belt plate before printing on that uh, polypropylene tape just so it sticks well because polypropylene does stick to polypropylene but not much else. Now with this special support material the trick is not only does it stick well to the polypropylene it also sticks well to this p-surface thing and it's not entirely breakaway. Instead, you can imagine it sort of like a chewing gum. That is, after it's been heated to 110 degrees. So you print as normal, and then you put the whole thing into an oven, or if everything's close to the built plate like here, you can just heat up that built plate all the way to 110 degrees, and then you just peel it off. And it'll have a chewing gum-like consistency, meaning it stretches a bit and flexes a bit, but you can just peel it right off your model. And that makes support removal real easy as well. So we've covered what poorly propylene is, why you would want it, why it is useful in this combination. So PP Print developed a special polypropylene filament that is much easier to print, has less warping, and sticks well to its other components, the support material and that piece surface, giving you essentially a nice little package. The rubbery surface then needs to be cleaned with a special cleaner, of course they have that as well. Um, so, so they provide everything you need, but now you need a printer to work well with that. And that's where the Pro 2 comes into play. And 
Essentially, we've now, together with PP Print, developed a kit that improves the Pro 2 in several ways to make sure that you can print properly with polypropylene on this printer. Now, previously, the rubbery mat, the piece surface, came in a piece that was smaller than the actual built plate on the Pro 2. So if this was the, was the built plate, you can see that this rubber piece doesn't cover all of it. So you would lose some printing space around it. In addition, you would have to glue it down. And with very large polypropylene parts, it could happen that due to the warping and the forces involved, it would peel the adhesive off the aluminum plate, meaning your part becomes unstuck, meaning that your print might fail. So now what we've done instead is we've taken the belt plate on the Pro 2 Plus, and it's still the same aluminum belt plate as always, but we've got a piece surface that perfectly fits the entire size. And what they do now is they apply a special adhesive and then they press the surface on top of that with incredible force. They said something like 100 tons. Now, I'm not sure if I misheard that, but that would be actually kind of crazy. And this special application process means the customer doesn't have to do it anymore as they did before. Instead, you now get the piece surface pre-pressed to your aluminum plate. This, there's no way this is coming off, no matter how hard your part tries to warp. And at the same time, you still get all the great characteristics with the polypropylene sticking really well to it. Also, uh, the chance of air bubbles becoming trapped underneath is significantly lower with this pressing method than if you applied it yourself. So that's already quite useful. And then on top of that, we've modified the printer in a couple of ways. And I think to show that, I will use my phone that I'll get uh, and mirror the screen into the video as well to show you a couple of the things we have done in addition. So to, to begin with, we explain, uh, we explained, we replaced the hot ends with uh, Buntag hot ends to improve the temperature distribution and uh, to have a better heat break, meaning not as much warmth travels up the filament to, um, well, weaken and soften it before it gets to the hot end itself. Then we added 3D Solex uh, nozzles that have a so-called core heating technology, meaning we're still able to uh, melt down the plastic better and have a more continuous flow. And an added side benefit was that we have significantly less stringing that we did with the old nozzles. We're using 0.6 millimeter nozzles just to improve the print speed a little and because the quality is entirely sufficient for models like these. So those were the first two improvements that we made. Then we exchanged the uh, tubes that were leading the filament all the way to the hot end. Now the clear one is what was previously used in the Pro 2 and this dark blue one is what we got. They are from an American company called Capricorn. And essentially the benefit here is that the Capricorn tube is far narrower than the other one and it is a PTFE tube, meaning that it has very low friction for the filament to travel through it. And due to the smaller diameter, uh, the retraction properties of the filament should actually be improved. Uh, so I can, you know, get that on camera a little bit and you can see how the Capricorn tube has a far smaller diameter on the inside than the clear one. So we did that. Uh, and because the polypropylene filament is pretty flexible compared to other more rigid filaments, uh, this does provide an added benefit. Then I can show you the hot ends with the different nozzles. So as I said, these are the Bontec upgrade hot ends for the Pro 2, and then we added 3D Solix nozzles. On top of that, we applied the uh, heater upgrade to the front, and uh, the, the cooling upgrade to the front. This is essentially a fan and a special fan duct to blow cool air across this stepper motor, meaning, once again, that the additional warmth from this stepper doesn't warm up the filament on the inside of the hot end. Uh, that used to be an issue with uh, this type of printing, where the filament would become so hot on the travel path from the top to the hot end uh, that it would cause jams and difficulties with the, uh, with the pulling mechanism. And then on the back, this is more not a minor, we added a heat sink to the other stepper motor as well, uh, just to cool that down a bit more as well. And this improved uh, cooling efficiency on the top of the printhead combined with the improved 
heating capabilities and heat distribution through the extra hot end and the extra nozzles actually provided significantly improved results. So what have I got here? Well, as an idea, uh, this leg rest was printed using the standard PP print profile by Raise 3 d with a standard 0.4 nozzle, I believe. This took about 81 hours to print. It looks pretty good. There's some significant stringing on the inside, but other than that, it's, it's uh, quite rigid. Uh, it has, of course, the polypropylene flexibility um, along with it, but uh, 81 hours, that's quite a long time for this. So we figured, hey, maybe we can cut that down. Now with the 3D Solex and the different hot ends and the 0.6 millimeter nozzle, we printed another one. This took 31 hours. So we've cut it more than in half. Uh, we've, we've slashed it by about 60% almost. So that was already a major improvement. And then we've still got a pellet machine, uh, 4070 Wasp HDP. Uh, and we printed one there as well with uh, transparent PP pellets, also by PP print. Um, and this took about 11 hours. So you can be even faster. However, the quality on this is much lower than the one we printed here on the Pro 2. But if all you care about is speed, that might be the printer to go to. For now though, focusing on the Pro 2, or the Pro 2 Plus rather, this was also printed on the Pro 2 Plus. There's a bit hanging around the sides from the support material. This is clear polypropylene along with that special support material. If I heated this up to about 110 degrees, I could just peel off all that support material. That's also why it was so stringy, because in order to get it off the belt plate, remember, I want to heat up the piece surface to a temperature that is very close to where that support material becomes chewy gum-like. Uh, and that's why I've got all this stuff hanging around, because the support material got soft. Um, so this combination is what we hope uh, the complete package to enable you to very easily print polypropylene at a very high quality and very high reliability. Things that are not self-evident or self-explanatory when printing with polypropylene. Um, but the Pro 2 Plus is a great printer for this. The built plate combined with hot ends and all the cooling upgrades and the different uh, tubes, th that really makes the difference. And one of these Pro 2 Plus printers these days costs about 5,000 euros. The upgrade kit, if we install it, if we calibrate everything and you just get the complete package, costs about 800 euros extra, uh, roundabout. Um, and I think that that is, if you're looking at printing polypropylene for a thesis, prosthesis, stuff like that, this might be a real game changer for you if you're interested. And if you are, let us know. Other than that, I think uh, that's all I had to explain about this process. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, leave them down below the video. And I hope I'll see you again in the future in a different video. Thank you very much and have a great day. See you then.